Hi everyone, we're going to summarize our lesson from class today on completing the square. So turning an expression into a perfect square can be a good way to solve a quadratic equation. Suppose we wanted to solve this equation, x squared minus 14x plus 10 equals 30. So we would first look at what's on the left side of your equal sign, that expression, x squared minus 14x plus 10, that's not a perfect square. Here's how we know, just to recap that again. Take a look at this c value. Is that a perfect square term? Can you square root 10? Because you cannot, that's not a perfect square. But x squared minus 14x plus 49 is a perfect square. So here we have uh, 49, which you can square root to get a 7, and if you, or a negative 7, and if you double that, that's where that negative 14 is. So that is following our perfect square pattern. So let's transform, transform this left side of our equal sign into an equation of the equation into a perfect square while keeping the equality of the two sides. Let's go ahead and rewrite our equation. We have x squared minus 14x plus 10 equals negative 30. So it's helpful to start by moving the constant that's not a perfect square out of the way. So this is that plus 10 right here. We can subtract it from both sides of our equation. So we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. That gives us x squared minus 14x equals negative 40. Okay, so what we want to do here is create a perfect square on the left. So to create a perfect square, when you have your linear term, if you take this negative 14 and divide it by 2, you get a negative 7. And then we want to square that, and that's where that 49 is coming from. We're going to add 49 to both sides. So x squared minus 14x plus 49. But because we added 49 to the left side, we have to add a 49 to the right side as well. That's keeping the equality um, of the statement. Whatever we do on one side, we do to the other side. This gives us a perfect square right here. x squared minus 40, 14x plus 49 is a perfect square. So we can go ahead and turn that. Well, let's simplify a little bit, actually. So this is going to give us x squared. I'm not going to have enough room. Okay, x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals, we'll go ahead and combine these like terms over here. Negative 40 plus 49 is a positive 9. Okay, once you have this perfect square on the left side, let's go ahead and write it in factored form. So square root of 49 is 7. And we should be able to double that to get this 14. Because it's a negative 14, we actually want to use a negative 7. So we're going to have x minus 7 squared equals 9. Now this goes back to a previous lesson where if you have a perfect square on both sides of your equal sign, so a perfect square equals a perfect square, you can solve this. We know that x minus 7 will be equal to 3, and x minus 7 is equal to negative 3. If you solve both of those just by adding 3 to both sides, or sorry, adding 7 to both sides, we're going to get x equals a positive 10, and then negative 3 plus 7 is a positive 4. All right, so this method of solving quadratic equations, that is called completing the square. In general, perfect squares in standard form look like x squared 
plus bx. So that's what we x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared. So to complete the square, take half the coefficient of the linear term and square it. So you guys are going to have the squared term and the linear term. So to finish off completing the square, whatever your linear term is, that coefficient, if you divide it by 2 and square it, that's how you get that third term. In the example, half of negative 14 is negative 7, and negative 7 squared is 49. We wanted to make the left side x squared minus 14x plus 49. To keep the equation true and maintain equality of the two sides of the equation, we added 49 to each side. So we had to add in a 49 in the equation above to complete this square. If we're adding 49 to one side of the equal sign, that's why we added 49 to the other side as well. Completing the square.